Here in this video, we're going to take a look at setting up the QuickBooks Sync Tool with LMN, specifically though relating to timesheets. So we'll walk you through the settings on uh, LMN Time and the QuickBooks Sync, how they work together, how they make sure you pay your employees properly and you get the right job costing out of the system. So the purpose of this video is to walk you through the setup of LMN Time and QuickBooks so that the staff are linked, your cost codes and service items are linked, and your jobs are linked so it knows what time in LMN Time should go to which job in QuickBooks for good job costing. A couple of basic assumptions we're going to make. Number one, that you are using QuickBooks for payroll. And uh, if you follow the structure we're going to go through here, you'll find it's very simple. Most of the work is done automatically in seconds from Element Time to QuickBooks. And really, you just got to print your paychecks. We're also going to assume, though, that you've got your staff set up in QuickBooks, that they exist, and you've got the pay rates created for them that they have the create paychecks from time data setting to on. That's important if you want to generate paychecks directly from timesheets in QuickBooks. And we're also going to assume that you've got the latest version of the LMN QuickBooks Sync tool. And that's important if you're going to do this export. If you don't know if you've got the latest version, what you can do is uninstall your current version of the LMN Sync tool, and then just log into LMN. Under your QuickBooks menu, choose Set Up QuickBooks. And at the bottom, there's a green button, and it says click here to download the LMN QuickBooks Sync desktop application. Download and reinstall that, and you're ready to go with the latest version. When you're setting up employees in QuickBooks for the LMN Sync, it's important that they're set up correctly. And let's just take a look at a real employee here. So if I go to my employee center, and I open a specific employee, the critical information you're going to need on this employee is on the payroll tab. So if I click the payroll tab, I need to make sure two things are set up. Number one, that I've applied payroll items to this employee along with the wages they earn for each payroll item type. So for this employee, George, I've set him up with an hourly field wage of $13.50, an overtime wage of $20.25 an hour, and a double time wage of $27 an hour. Down here, I've turned on use time data to create paychecks so that it's going to use the timesheet data multiply the hours for george's timesheet by these rates to create his paycheck fairly simple where it does get a little bit complicated is if you've created a lot of payroll items that we covered in an earlier video so we're not going to spend a lot of time on payroll items here but payroll items did allow you to create different wage levels and ultimately a different chart of account to export that time to if you wanted to. So for example, if you paid employees different rates for snow work or for prevailing wage work, uh, you can set up payroll items for that. In the case that you have that situation, that's true, then you need to make sure for each one of your employees that they have a payroll item for each different kind of work that they could possibly do. Uh, Element Time will throw an error if, if a payroll item doesn't exist. It won't even let you try. But it's best to have it set up properly in the first place. So if George might ever work on snow work and I'm going to pay George $17 an hour to shovel snow, then what I want to make sure is that I've got a snow hourly rate in here for George. So field wages snow hourly and his rate is $17 an hour. And I'll give him a snow overtime in case he works that as well. And QuickBooks will automatically calculate that overtime rate for me. And so now I've got George's regular rate, his overtime rate, and his double time rate, if, it, if your state pays double time. If not, you can ignore that. But I've also created separate rates for snow hourly and snow overtime so that if George ever works on a job in snow, it'll know to override his normal wages with those snow wages. And we'll show you that on the payroll item side. So now let's walk through the basic setup for the payroll section of Element Time. First, you want to open that LMN Time QuickBooks Sync Tool. And you want to click the LMN Time heading up here. There's LMN Estimating, and that'll set up your estimates. But you want to click LMN Time so that you can set up your time tracking settings. If you've already set up Estimating, it'll automatically link your LMN account and your QuickBooks company file. If you haven't done that yet, you'll need to do these two steps. Fairly straightforward. I'll jump into number three, which is choose your job costing type. You're able to export your time to QuickBooks using three different settings. The simplest setting is called no job costing. And what it'll do is export your time for payroll, but it's not going to assign any of that time to your QuickBooks jobs. So that is going to require the least setup, the least effort. 
It'll be the simplest thing you can do, but you're not going to get job costing out of it. So I wouldn't recommend it. With little to no extra work, you can use a, a more complicated setting and get perfect job costing information. And week to week, it'll be no extra work. So it's there as an option, but I wouldn't advise it. Your next job costing style is called simple. And what that'll do is export your time for payroll and it'll allocate it against the correct job, but it won't use service items. So I will know how many hours I spent on a particular job, but I'll have no idea whether it was hardscape, softscape, maintenance, that kind of thing. The last option is detailed, and I'd recommend that you run with the detailed. I often recommend you run the simplest possible thing, but in this case, once you set up the detailed, it's very easy week to week to have it happen automatically for you. It's just the initial setup that takes a bit of time. So set up detailed, and what detailed to do is make sure that every timesheet hour is exported for correct payroll. It also gets assigned to the correct job for job costing, and every payroll hour also gets assigned to service items so that you can look at exactly how many hours you've worked in the different services within your company. I'm going to leave mine a detailed. Back to our wizard now, we can go to number four, which is link cost codes, staff, and payroll items. Now what this is going to do is make sure that we've got all the correct links in place to link from LMN to QuickBooks so that LMN knows which employee is which in QuickBooks and they know what cost codes, which are your service items that link together, uh, and also your payroll items will be linked. So step one is to make sure your QuickBooks service items are matched to a corresponding LMN cost code. We covered this in the last video when we did estimates. Basically, we want to make sure that each LMN cost code has been matched to a corresponding service item in QuickBooks. And as a reminder, you don't need every QuickBooks service item in here. Keep it simple. Just the ones you need for time tracking. When you're finished, click Next. And the next thing it's going to do is go load your employee information from QuickBooks. And this is going to allow me to match the employees that I've set up in LMN time with the employees that I've got set up in QuickBooks. You will be prompted with a permission. I'd recommend you turn this to yes. Always allow it, even if QuickBooks isn't running. Hit continue. It says, are you sure? Hit yes. And confirm access with done. Now what it's going to do is going to load my QuickBooks employees on the left, my LMN time employees here, and I want to make sure my LMN time employees have been matched to the QuickBooks employees. Now if you have certain employees, that you're not going to pay on timesheets, perhaps as an owner, etc. You don't necessarily need to match them, but I would recommend that you match as many as possible. If you've got an employee, the way to match it is to simply drag and drop it over to the matching employee in LMN. So Angel doesn't match Dave, but Dave matches Dave. So I'll grab Dave, I'll drag him over, and I'll drop him. That match two would get filled out here. Well, make sure you've got all your LMN time employees that you're going to track time for match to a QuickBooks employee that you've created in QuickBooks. When you're done that list, hit Next. When you're finished, hit Yes. And now what it's going to do is go grab your QuickBooks payroll items and match them to your LMN time payroll items. Now if you haven't set up LMN time payroll items, let's take a look at that now. To find your payroll items in LMN time, open up LMN time and go to Settings. On the Settings, go to Payroll Codes. Here's your different payroll codes that you've got set up in LMN time. The first checkbox here indicates whether it's active, whether it's actually being used. And the second checkbox here indicates that it has or has not been matched to QuickBooks already. What I need in LMN is enough payroll codes to match the different payroll items that you've set up in QuickBooks. So that's what this screen is showing me here. These are the payroll codes that I've set up in my LMN time settings. These are the payroll items that I have in QuickBooks, and I need to make sure my LMN time payroll codes have a corresponding match with QuickBooks. You can see here I've set up two that don't. I've got some maintenance field, hourly and overtime, that haven't yet been matched to QuickBooks. So to do that, I'm just going to grab my field wages hourly, drag that over here, and my field wages overtime, drag that over here. And now I've got a corresponding match. Once you've got them all matched, you can click Next, and you're ready to move on to the next step. The next step in this process is step number five, where you link your existing LMN time jobs to the jobs you've got in QuickBooks that have 
been set up already. This is going to take you your longest step right here, but it only takes you a long time the first time. Once you make this match, it's going to remember the match. The very first time you run through it, none of your element time jobs are matched, so it takes a bit of time to match them up. As you export estimates into element time, they are already matched for you, so you don't need to do this time and time again. What you're doing here is looking for the jobs that you've got in element time and matching them with jobs that exist in QuickBooks. Now, you do have two lists here, match jobs and unmatched jobs. If you just leave it on unmatched jobs, it will show you all the jobs in element time that don't have a corresponding QuickBooks job allocated to them. And of course, you can match jobs by simply dragging the job from QuickBooks over here to its corresponding job in element time and letting go. And that's it. And as you start adding, you can do this one as well. As you start matching and adding your different jobs, get them all finished, get them all set up, and then hit save. And when you hit save, you've now created a link from the job in element time to that job in QuickBooks so that when you export that timesheet, it's going to apply not just the time for the employee's wages, but it's going to apply the cost of those wages to that job that you've linked it. Now that's all you need to do for the setup. To walk through, make sure your cost code, staff, and payroll items are linked. Then you need to make sure your element time jobs and your QuickBooks jobs are linked. Once you're done that, you're ready to exit and you're just about ready for your first export.